Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 legendary weapons for Flak in Fortlands 3. Flak has much more weapons to run with now than ever before, making this the best time to slay the field as the Master of Beasts. Each one of these guns is elevated to another level when in Flak's hands, dealing some incredible damage in every situation. I will letting you know where you can find each gun, explain what they do, and the things you can do to maximize their damage. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, and if you want to help out the channel further, then subscribing is a great way to do that. Don't forget to let me know what weapons you love to run on Flak in the comments below, and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 legendary weapons for Flak the Beastmaster with the Plaguebearer, an elemental launcher that has an increased chance to drop from the Warden when on Mayhem 6 or above, who you fight around here in the Anvil. But like all Mayhem 6 Plus weapons, they can also drop from the Guardian takedown bosses. The Plaguebearer must be charged before firing and consumes 3 ammo per shot. Out of its barrel emerges a large orb with a dark secret. During flight, dangerous merv grenades will cling to the main projectile like a mini fish on a whale shark and hunt down any enemies who get too close. The damage that surfaces from that is insane and is doubled down on as another barrage is unleashed when the orb lands. It's unrelenting, infecting everyone with massive amounts of damage. If the initial shot wasn't enough to make your enemy crumble before you, the homing projectiles will ensure they meet their maker. And it's made even better by Flag, who can put a whole lot more critical mass behind each projectile. Moving on to the Queen's or King's Call, a pair of Jacob's weapons that can come in all elements between them and can only drop from Tyrene the Destroyer who you fight in Destroyer's Rift. The call pistols are powerful in accurate players' hands, spawning 3 projectiles per successful critical hit which will arc into your target and each deal a bullet's worth of damage. That means you get 4 times the damage when landing criticals and also get that ammo returned free of charge thanks to the call effect. Without hitting crits you'll be through your mag in no time due to the high 3 ammo per shot cost but with flak and fadeaway or even just megabore there's much more wiggle room. Those abilities not only help with the initial shot, but will also get the ricocheting projectiles dealing maximum damage, and it even provides you with lifesteal. I find Rack Attack works well with it, as fadeaway activations can become quite few and far between, but either way, when you land those crits, it's going to spawn a world of hurt. Next up is the Reflux, a Hyperion shotgun that can only come in Corrosive. It's a Mayhem 6 plus weapon that can drop from the Guardian takedown bosses, but you'll find it quicker by targeting Genevieve who you fight way out here in Voracious Canopy. The Reflux is a weapon designed with Flak in mind as they are able to enhance its power more than any other Vault Hunter. Each shot you land will connect enemies with deadly acid ties, draining their health and growing in strength the more green there is on screen. Normally you'd only see a maximum of one critical pop up per shot, but during fadeaway all of those chain links will count as criticals, not only increasing their damage, but also resetting fadeaway pretty much straight after it's finished. With Leave No Trace and Headcount in combination with Megavore, you'll be fading away for days on end while majorly extending the life of each magazine. It's a mobbing machine in that setup and should never be overlooked. Moving on to the Flipper, a peak Maliwan SMG exclusive to the Bounty of Blood that has an increased chance to drop from Minosaur, you fight around here in Blood Sun Canyon. The Flipper is not only my number one dance move, it's also a gun that has great affinity with Flak. That's done largely in part due to its mammoth projectile count which peaks at 9 a short while into each magazine. On a critical focused Flak build, that's 9 chances to return a bullet back to your magazine or to get that action skill back up and ready to go. If you can live with its charge time, you'll be reaping the rewards of insane damage when that full elemental stream is flowing and it's great both to mob or to boss with. Mm -hmm. 
Coming in cold is the Clairvoyance, a guns love and tentacles assault rifle that can only come in cryo and can only be dropped by Critchy. You fight in this area of Curse Haven. The Clairvoyance is a gun that you'll probably want two of, the fully automatic Gatlin variant when you want to mow down some mobs and the multi paladin masher version for its highest single shot damage. Whatever way you run it, just know you're making the right choice. It combines the traits of various Jacobs and Torg weapons when you land a critical hit. Landing them will stick bombs to your target which will explode after a period of time or whenever you reload, dealing high damage and ricocheting bullets to nearby enemies. If you land multiple, the grenades will explode in unison, ripping through your target while the unleashed projectiles cut holes in anyone else. It's a great gun on flag, both through the damage it deals and its ability to up the sticky bomb count even if you don't hit crits. Moving on now to the Skull Masher, a deadly Jacob sniper rifle that belongs to Guns, Love and Tentacles. With an increased chance to drop from S to the Invincible, you fight around in this area of Skidmore Basin as part of the Wheat Slash questline. The Skull Masher is the sniper rifle as far as flak is concerned. Heavy critical hit damage, laser accuracy, multiple pellets and a lightweight trigger combined to create an absolute beast. It deletes enemies in single shots and ricochets 5 projectiles on critical hits which rip through the toughest mobs. That's what you'd expect from a shotgun rifle and it's incredible in all ranges. It has the highest fire rate of all semi-auto sniper rifles by a long way but that's often left on the sideline because of its crazy one shot potential. Whether you're hunting mobs or some bigger game, it will never let you down. Coming up next is the Rowan's Call, an automatic Jacobs assault rifle that can come in fire, shock or radiation and has an increased chance to drop from Red Rain a final boss of the Slaughter Star 3000. The Ron's Call is from the experimental department of the Jacobs Arsenal, supporting an alien barrel and an enhanced critical effect that makes it all the more deadly. Not only does it fire large caliber rounds at an automatic speed, but those rounds are elementally charged and return not just one but two bullets each time you hit that weak point. For Flak, that's like a sunset in the Tanzadir ruins, allowing them to utilize skills like Megavore and Fadeaway to top up that magazine without properly landing them. Two bullets returned also means two bullets ricocheted and those projectiles also deal splash damage. It'll tear clean through a group of mobs and you'll struggle to find a fully automatic single shot weapon that hits harder than this. Up next it's the Mighty Hellwalker, a trailblazing Jacob's shotgun that can only come in fire and has an increased chance to drop from Rodog if you fight in this area of the Splinterlands. The Hellwalker is what you take with you when you want to see the world burn, firing 10 pellets in the shape of a pentagram that rip the flesh from bone. It's your classic sawn off shotgun expanding its entire 2 bullet magazine with each shot but its reload is lightning fast. Equipping enough mag size boost will have you firing twice before needing to load more shells and with leave no trace you can go for even longer. Because its mag size is so small you should avoid a next to mags anointment and instead equip a reload damage stack or wild fade away active one instead. It's fantastic on the mobbing front with ricochets causing shrapnel to fly out for each of its 10 pellets and its burning nature and heavy critical damage will have you going toe to toe with all of hell's demons. Time now for the Light Show, a blood off pistol that can come in all elements and belongs to the Bounty of Blood. It has an increased chance to drop from Lazardactyl if you fight in this area of the Obsidian Forest. The Light Show is an all round pistol that has great affinity with Flak in both the mobbing and bossing arenas. It fires 4 projectiles per shot that spin from its barrel like a Beyblade and cut ribbons into your enemies. It's both multi paladed and powerful which is fantastic for a critical focus build ripping into targets with a flurry of bullets. Because the projectile pattern is a circle it's almost impossible to land each shot where you want it especially at longer ranges but with skills like Megavore Black can make use of everything it has to offer better than anyone else.
Before number one is revealed, let's dive into some honorable mentions. First up is The Free Radical, a Melly One Blaster exclusive to the director's cut, which has an increased chance to drop from Beef Pliskin. You fight around here and caress, can you? The Free Radical isn't a gun that's all that suited to black, but it is incredibly strong, so for that you have to have it somewhere in your build. It always fires shock orbs that spawn a regular projectile on impact, which will turn around and take it to your opponent again. Of course, we can't control where those go, but Flak can pretend that they're criticals, raising the power of this already powerful gun. Rack attack with an action skill and splash damage anointment is a good way to go with splash damage weapons like this one, but you can always switch to fade away when it's time to supercharge the pain. Moving on to the Becker, a semi-automatic Jacobs assault rifle that can only be obtained once per character by defeating all of the legendary hunt targets throughout the base game locations. If you haven't picked this gun up yet, you'll want to wait until the max level cap of 72, and if you have, then you'll need to start another playthrough on a new Vault Hunter. The Becker is a no-nonsense weapon that does what it does to perfection. It has a unique effect similar to the Leuda, where extra projectiles join the party after you fire, but unlike the Leuda, the original stays on course as the three others emerge. Because of that projectile pattern, it is best used at the close side of medium ranges, where all of its projectiles combine to cause some heavy collateral damage. And it's a weapon that proves you don't need to be fancy to get the job done. Next up is the Trickshot, a pistol exclusive to Arms Race, which can drop anywhere there but does have a higher chance to drop from this chest. The trick in each shot with this one is that each projectile is not alone and will trigger its automatic switch each time you land a shot, expanding the remainder of its magazine at a blistering speed. It's a great effect that practically turns it into a sniper rifle as the magazine's worth of damage is railed off in quick fire time. All you have to do is get that first shot landing and the rest will fall into place, making it a great Jacob's Pistol for use on flak. The next honourable mention I have for you is the Garcia, a Jacob's Shotgun that has an increased chance to drop from Chonk Stomp, but you fight around in this area of Floodmore Basin. The Garcia is a beefy pump action shotgun supporting a large capacity drum mag and some hefty buckshot rounds. It comes firing either 8, 10 or 16 pallets and is much better with the full stock as they all consume the same amount of ammo. It dishes out heavy damage in bursts as it needs to be cocked each time you expend 2 shells. That takes a little getting used to as it's not the most fluid gun to use but if you can adjust to that correctly then there's no doubt it's mighty powerful. The last honourable mention I have for you is the Lucian's Call, one of the many Call brothers and sisters, which can come in fire, corrosive and cryo, and has an increased chance to drop from blue fire at the end of the Slaughter Star 3000, but can also be obtained by exchanging Ludograms with Crazy Earl, which you can obtain from Dinklebot, if you fight a quarter of the way through Skywell 27. The Lucian's Call is a Jacob's weapon with a blood of fire rate and mag sides. If that hasn't got you hooked already, then you're obviously not a fish. Bearing rounds into your enemy's faces will produce a swarm of ricocheting projectiles that'll flood the screen. Not only does great damage come from that, but bullets will also re-enter your magazine, two of each per critical hit. It doesn't have the same crit bonus as Jacob's weapons, but its fire rate more than makes up for that, and is great for proccing abilities too. It's the perfect gun to pull out if you want to blitz the field, and you'll never find yourself needing to reload. We also can't forget about the Guardian, a utility shotgun from the Fallen Heroes Bolt Card. It boosts your damage the further you are from your enemies, maxing out at 400%, and synergizing extremely well with Rack Attack Black and the Peregrine Class Mod. Just have this in your hands and trigger the Rack Pack to dive bomb targets after you've strapped grenades to their ankles. Not only will the grenade deal greatly increase damage, but so will the rack, and makes for some serious devastation. If you want peak damage, you'll want to equip a Revolter, a Deathless Artifact, and have a U-Rad Anointment on your Guardian, but either way, it's insanely strong, and incredible amounts of fun. Other great weapons for use on Black include the Maggie, a steadfast shotgun pistol that works in the dry, the wet, and the dusty. The Tizzy is fantastic for dropping bosses quickly and can be brought to the mobbing field as well, although not for that long. The Sandhawk works in a similar vein but is acquired from the base game 
and it's equally powerful. Some great alternative Jacob shotguns include the TK's Wave and Variants, with TK's Heat Wave being my personal favourite. The Sledge's shotgun is also a lot of fun, especially if you can get the Sledge's Super Shotgun. And for a shotgun outside of the base game, the Robin's Call is both deadly and has a great effect that will have your mag blessed with unemptiness. Don't forget to try the Lucky 7 in a Terror build, the Moonfire, the Unseen Threat or the Monocle to name a couple of sniper rifles. And of course, the Plasma Coil, Unkempt Herald and OPQ system are going to do wonders too. Time now for the number one weapon on Flak, and who would have guessed, it's the Monarch, a bludgeoning assault rifle that comes in all of the flavours, and will drop the quickest from Killer Vault, who you fight around here in Lectra City. The Monarch is a brutal multi palleted weapon, the kind that shreds through health bars like Tony Hawk on the halfpipe. It will riddle your enemies with bullets, cutting through them with disregard. It most commonly comes in a x4 variant, but you can double that if you want with the x8 one that consumes twice the ammo and a consecutive hits anointment is a solid choice for both. On flak, it's the gun to do it all, dropping bosses like the soap in the shower and bringing mountains of damage to the mobbing field too. That's helped by its bipod, which while out will seemingly hold you in place, but double its already incredible damage. The key while mobbing is deciding when and when not to use it, and you'll find it much easier to use when pulled out in close ranges. The sheer speed and amount of bullets it fires combines perfectly to create a must have weapon for Flak, and although it is inaccurate, Flak can offset misplaced shots into critical numbers unlike anyone else. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 legendary weapons for use on Flak. and don't forget to let me know in the comments what your number one is. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.